we're looking at first classes with business partner and if I can just take you through the objectives for this afternoon's webinar I'll be talking about the approach to this uh, new series this new business English series the thinking behind it we'll look at some tasks that you could do in first classes particularly videos but also communication activities and I'm going to show you two kinds of videos that you can find in business partner and the first ones appear in lessons one of each unit with a real world authentic video and vocabulary and speaking tasks related to that and then you may have already seen in previous webinars but if not I'll be showing you a, a short clip of a dramatized video and these dramatized videos we have in lessons three in the communication skills lessons in the course book and um, also as I said some tasks where you can practice where students can practice their language and communication skills combined together and at the end we'll wrap up by doing a short little quiz yeah you know, just to to check that you're familiar with the course book series maybe you've already started teaching from it or maybe you're planning to you know, next year or in the new in the near future um, so before we move on we're going to do a poll and Charlie um, has, should have the poll ready Charlie and um, we're going to ask the question how many levels are there of business partner how many levels are there is it eight levels or four or six or two levels and if you'd like to send in your results then we'll hear back from Charlie So the poll should now be open, as I said, the question there, we'll have a few of these quiz type questions throughout the webinar, we'll have some more questions at the end. And this quiz you could do together with your learners when it's the first classes, or, you know, just for yourself to, to make sure you know where everything is in the course book. Well, we've got the answers in now, and I'm glad to say that uh, the majority picked the correct answer, which was A at eight levels, A1 to C1. Great. Thank you, Charlie. So um, you, you're doing well there to, to kick off with. Now let's talk about um, what's different, really, because maybe you've used other business English books and you'd like to know what's different about this one. Well, first of all, I have to say it's very, very flexible. Um, in that it's modular, except for the first two levels, the A1 and the A2 level that Margaret was talking about in last week's webinar. Um, in those um, initial levels, we've taken a different approach in which is a linear approach so that grammar and vocabulary can be recycled, as she explained. But in the, the other levels, mid and low and mid intermediate, upper intermediate through to C1, it's modular. So you can choose the order that you do the units in, or you can choose the order that you do maybe the lessons in within each unit. And there are also lots of additional activities available online, which you can pick and choose from according to your students needs and the important thing is that it's both for in work students so you might be teaching in company classes either one-to-one -one or small groups but also tertiary students pre-work students and in fact that 16 to 18 year old group um, with, and for example I know in places like Switzerland and Germany they might be studying sort of professional courses and, and business administration so the book could also work for those kind of groups. As I said, we'll, we're looking at both communication and business skills. So whereas maybe in other course books, there are certainly pages and lessons on business skills. In Business Partner, we have two lessons, one focusing on the soft skills, communication skills, or if you like human skills that Margaret also mentioned a couple of weeks ago. And then a separate lesson with audio and functional language practicing those kind of core business school business skills like giving presentations managing meetings negotiating and so on um, there are also writing lessons which you won't often find in um, course books let alone business english course books and we'll take a look later at some of the writing tasks business writing tasks your learners might be interested in as well as business workshops 
which are really case studies uh -huh, that um, are also optional and at the back of the course book. So there's lots happening here. As I said, it's very flexible and you've got those additional activities online. Um, if you go into what's called the mail, the My English Lab, you'll find more work there to do comprehension questions with your students if they need that or more vocabulary activities or pronunciation work for them to look at. So without uh, further to do, um, another question for you, another poll actually from Charlie. And this, the question this time is how many units are there? How many units are there in each of the course books? Charlie, could you, sh the poll is now open, I can see. Would you like to write in your answers? Oops, <laughs> I've just given it away. <laughs> so I can see some of you have just been joining us. Welcome to everybody who's just joined us in the last few moments. We're doing a poll. Would you like to answer the poll? And then Charlie will take us through the answers shortly. So I'm glad to say again that the majority have chosen the correct answer, which was answer C of eight units. That's right. Um, I gave it away there for a second, getting a little bit too, um, you know, excited about cl clicking my, <laughs> clicking the buttons on my laptop this afternoon. But they are indeed eight units. So let's, and we're going to have a look at the course book in general. I'll give you an, an overview and then we'll look at what's happening within the units and some of the lessons, as I said before, some example videos and tasks for you to, so, so you get the feel basically uh, for this series. There are also eight business workshop lessons. I've mentioned there's a review unit, yeah, for each um, unit at the back of the course book, there's pronunciation practice again, quite unusual for a business English course book, as well as the video and audio scripts, of course, and a key a glossary for key business vocabulary. And you've got all those videos and audios available online, which you can download and have offline for when you go into class. So you don't need to be worried about losing a connection in order to play the videos or the audio. Okay. Um, that's the that was the course book overview. Now let's take a closer look at um, one of the units here. This is taken from a B2 level of business partner and a typical unit here with five lessons, as you can see. And each lesson will have a lesson outcome. If I can just highlight that for you there. OK, each lesson will have a lesson outcome, for example, here in, in business skills. OK. And um, the first one will have a video. The second lesson usually has a reading or a listening and works on the grammar in the second lesson. The third lesson we'll take a look at in a few minutes is the communication skills lesson with more video. Then we have business skills and then a short writing lesson, which is only one page at the end. Now, let me remove um, the, those drawings. Fantastic. And then we can we can move on there. Right. Now, if um, quick little test for you, but just you can just do this, you know, um, as you're sitting at your desks where, where you might be at work in the staff room or at home. Have a look at these lessons and see if you can match um, the content you know, to the lessons. So we've got the five lessons in each unit. But as you can see, this is wrong. Lesson one doesn't have a dramatized video. So how could you match the content to the lessons? If you'd like to think about that for a moment. Ah, that's right. So we can see that the authentic video comes in lesson one, as I've said, with more vocabulary work and a project. Lesson two is the main sort of grammar lesson. Lesson three has a dramatized video. 
Lesson four, here it says listening and functional language. But it's the business skills lesson, remember. And lessons one, three, and four all come with a speaking task at the end. Let's do the work business workshops. And finally, lesson five, that's the writing lesson. That's just nice, short and sweet on one page. Good. Let's move in a bit closer now into the structure of a lesson one. So remember, this is the lesson with a real world video which is um, very engaging very motivating for students um, and but we've prepared obviously vocabulary work and comprehension questions for it so you don't need to do that kind of work whereas normally you'd spend quite a lot of time preparing searching on the web trying to download an audio script or video script from somewhere but here you've got uh, the typically a discussion leading in to the lesson and obviously just comprehension for general understanding and then more detailed comprehension followed by vocabulary it's not just one vocabulary exercise we've decided well the team the business partner to have um, highlight some of the target items from the video but then develop that yeah, to extend the lexical field and do further work using those target items so we have in fact up to about three vocabulary exercises in these lessons the first lessons and ending with a collaborative project which can be as short or as long as you want it to be so you might adapt it for smaller classes you might extend it or you might just do a part of it um, depending on how much time you have for your classes and your students of course so to give you a bit more of a flavor what kind of topics are we looking at then for these lessons one well in a moment I'll show you a video about um, workplace culture, but it could be other types of topics. For example, learning on the job. Two weeks ago, I showed a video which was actually from this unit looking at types of training and interns coming into an organization and how they organize the induction days for them. So the, as I said, they're real world tasks and in this particular level, as I said, B2, Upper Intermediate, um, Unit 3, Lesson 1 of Unit 3 looks at um, economic crises. And there's a little bit of history there with the history of economic depressions and recessions. So there, there are all kinds of um, topical issues that our students can engage in. So if we have a look then at Unit one, lesson one, authentic video, it's about company culture. And we can start by asking students to think about the, the hierarchy in their companies or organizations, the way people behave, the way people communicate, maybe what people wear, and especially how people work together. So we can get them thinking about these things before moving on to showing the video. Now, this is um, about gravity payments. It's not dramatized. It's a real video, a real company in the United States. And here we'll see what happened at Gravity Payments. And as we listen, I'd like you just to note down what was the change that happened and how did this change affect two of the workers? Kareen, we hear from a woman called Kareen and also Elisa. OK, Ivana, so, I'm, Ivana, I'm very sorry, but I've just seen there's been an error with the video upload and neither of the videos are there where they're right. supposed to be. I've tried to find a solution, but I can't. However, I have emailed the videos to everybody in the webinar so they can look at them immediately afterwards. You'll have them for there. Okay, great. I've mm -hmm. emailed them directly to them uh, just now. Right, okay. So I'm very sorry for that. Right, okay, no, no worries, Charlie. Thanks for letting me know just before I play. So, in fact, there's so much to get through today. It's, um, you know, you can watch the videos then um, just shortly after the webinar or when you have a moment this week and you can do those activities yourselves to check them out. But the uh, I'll tell you now the, the main thing about gravity payments. The interesting thing is that the CEO was earning um, a lot of money. He was earning, in fact, one million American dollars. Yeah. And he decided to make a change. He thought that wasn't fair. And he um, then decided to pay all the employees, including himself, seventy thousand yeah, dollars as an annual salary. So this was um, a huge sort of news event, and of course, some employees were very happy with this. But some of the senior managers who were earning um, more 
were unhappy about it. But the employees we see in the video, Kareem was happy because she could afford then to move to a nicer area in Seattle and be closer, closer to work. Elisa was certainly very happy. Gravity Payments is a credit card payment um, company. And Elisa was able to pay off her own credit card debts and also move into better accommodation. So those were two employees who were very happy. And you can then ask your students what they thought about this and the response from the different employees. OK, but we'll let you watch um, that video then. It's just a little clip in your own time. What happens afterwards? Well, in these lessons at the end, there is always a project. Now, this could be like an extended role play. It could be a survey or it could be a debate. In this case, the students talk about company policy. And it doesn't matter here if they have in work experience or not, if they're still in education, but they can think of company practices that might cause problems, whether it's the timetable or the way people are asked to dress or things like that. And then in pairs, they decide on a fictional company and they're going to do like a mini welcome, if you like, to new employees explaining these policies. You can be quite creative here, getting students to um, maybe use the same examples from the video that everyone's paid 70,000 euros or $70,000 uh, a year or something a little bit more creative with um, weird rules and regulations. They can be, they can have fun with this kind of project. So remember then at the end of lesson one, yeah, um, you always end with a project after the video. Okay, moving on then, another example from a lesson one could be time management. Maybe you you decide, well, I don't actually want to start with that particular unit. Um, I want to deal with company culture later on. You might pick and choose then from the units in, and choose your own order or even choose the order with your company classes if you have small in company classes. Now, this a particular lesson I like. Um, it's about managing your time. And the it was Marjorie Rosenberg, some of you may have seen recently talking in IATF or BESIG in Berlin. And Marjorie is um, another materials writer and teacher and presenter. And she did some great activities here working on the vocabulary for managing time. Again, it's a topic that many of our students can relate to. And the video here, which I won't show you today, but the video looks at working practices in factories and how the whole concept of just in time was invented and how that affects productivity. So a little bit of sort of business knowledge is useful there for students. But the lead-in is always quite personalized. We start with quite personalized, easy questions. How do you keep track of all your tasks? How do you plan? How do you prioritize? Okay, with some visuals to help before we go into sort of more businessy and world knowledge areas. We've tried to do this carefully so that the leading questions build up to, if you like, more sort of complex issues. All right. And here are the vocabulary activities I was talking about, as I've mentioned before, with um, Marjorie Rosenberg. Um, I was very lucky, actually, on this project to be working with people like Marjorie, but also Margaret O'Keefe, of course, uh, a co -author I've co-authored with before for Pearson, as well of lots of people with business skills, experience skills trainers, you know, such as Bob Dignan and Mike, who were also talking recently in Bessig. But here we go. I, I just remembered <laughs> them because I saw them quite recently in Germany. But here we have nice expressions to do with time. Uh, you could be pushed for time, on time, um, just in time, you know, time management. And as I said, there's not just one vocabulary exercise. There'll be about three, ending again with a project, okay? So here in this case, it's not a role play, it's a debate. And this works very well, I find, with quite large groups. You can do it in open class with one large group A, one group B, or have them, divide them into subgroups, groups of four two students for um, the motion and two students against. Here, the proposal is we can see here, moving to a small, smaller office, right? Now, um, I'm sure students will have lots to say about that. 
Yeah. The benefits of that maybe it's moving from the center, maybe it will be difficult for some staff to get to, maybe it will reduce their traveling time, maybe it will increase it. So this is like a good topic for people to get their teeth into and discuss. Yeah, the, the key point being in all of these tasks, of course, is collaboration, get them working together. Now I'll just erase my highlighter there. Thank you. <laughs> right, back to normal. And what else? Well, we've talked then about lessons one quite in detail. Now, if I can briefly describe what's happening in the other video lesson, the communication skills lesson, lesson three. So we don't just have one video now, yeah, or two or three. We have actually four videos in these communication skills lessons. There's a leading discussion, there's a setup video which sets the scene. So you and your learners get used to who the characters are and their accents and what the situation or the problem is. And then there are two follow-up videos where we see people discussing the same thing but using a different approach. So here there would be the same characters in a meeting or in a discussion or in a negotiation. And in fact, the students could choose whether they view option A or option B first. They have a choice. It's not that one option is wrong and one is right. Yeah, you will hear from the conclusion video where we have one of the expert writers talking. This could be Bob or or Mike Hogan, as I said before, or uh, my colleague Margaret O'Keefe. They could be discussing about the pros, pros and cons of those different options and saying maybe what could work best in a certain situation. You don't have to show that video to the students if you've got a shorter class of an hour, an hour and a half, but you certainly want to view it yourself just so that you're a little bit better informed and you've got some more background there. So essentially then to show them two or three videos and of course ending with a speaking task, yeah, which where the students are able to role play the situation. You know, this could be to do with being more or less direct or polite. It could be about being more collaborative. It could be about giving bad news. Yeah? Different communication skills, which are those soft skills we've talked about in um, the other webinars. So let's have a look. You're probably thinking, mm, not sure how this communication skill lessons works. Let's look a look at the, the task. So this is lesson three from unit one, building relationships. That could be a possible topic. Or team communication, the way teams communicate in an organization. Yeah, or giving uh, bad news and being positive or, or negative um, about the news. So these are the kind of communication skills, yeah that we're dealing with. Again, this is the B2 level. If we take one of those ideas, yeah, team culture, here yeah, you can see some nice like, simple drawings, but quite effective to get students talking and to, uh, to understand. Here we've got one kind of team culture there, yeah? um, or we've got this kind of team culture. And as an introduction, ask the students, you know, what do they think about these ways of communicating, which is used in their organization or which team culture do they prefer? Maybe they are working in an organization that's like this, but they actually prefer this kind of approach. So we really get students thinking critically yeah, before watching the video and also during and after uh, watching the video. Let me just remove those little drawings there. So team culture A would obviously be more sort of hierarchical or maybe simply just reporting to a manager or manager di delegating directly to employees. Whereas you can see in team culture B with the circles there, the communication might be more organic or more fluid, um, possibly more democratic. Maybe it takes longer to come to decisions in this kind of culture, which is more collaborative, right? And I think you'll find both university students who are working in groups on, on, on projects and in company students are interested in this kind of thing. So with this video, we have a finance person, Emma, and she has found a problem with the decision for the location of a factory in Bangladesh. Now, the numbers just don't add up for her. She says to Claudia, who's the key account manager, um, 
that this, you know, this is the wrong to shit decision about having the location in Bangladesh, they should move to China. Whereas Claudio takes a um, different kind of approach to Emma and says, well, but we're working with Sanjit, we're working in a team, we can't just, you know, make that, dis that decision, we need to consult and we need to talk together and come up with a solution. So both are right in their own way, both, both to have different perspectives, both are communicating in different ways. And then Claudio in this um, video, I don't think we can watch this either, can we? No. Uh, um, I'm afraid not. I've understood. That's, that's okay. So people who've joined us a bit later, just to say there's been a little uh, technical hitch that we unfortunately can't show the video now this afternoon, but Charlie is doing a, a very good job in um, contacting everybody and you'll be sent those little little clips. It's not the all of the videos anyway from the, the lesson, it's just the first setup video. So as I was saying, Claudio then advises Emma and here I can show you a little excerpt, excerpt a little extract if you like, from the, the script which students have at the back of the course book but you also as a teacher have them online you can download the scripts you can pull them out and show them like this on a PowerPoint in class if that's helpful yeah and Claudio says well yes we are experts but um, you know Sanjit has a different view of things yeah so sorry just to go back there he likes to pitch ideas around to collaborate it's the NTech team culture this is a dramatized video, so NTech is just the fictional name of the company. We've seen this from day one, so I think the best approach here is to be consultative and include Sanjit in the decision making. Yeah, do you remember the the models we had, the two different team cultures? So this is he's definitely into having this sort of um, open team culture, and that graphic B then would match up with this. But Emma has a different, we're saying, well, yes, but we can't get production location wrong, Claudio, we just can't. It's been a major project risk from day one. A wrong decision will kill this whole thing. So for Emma, the numbers don't add up. She's obviously concerned for the company, the success of the project. But Claudio says, okay, got to go. And he puts the ball back into her court, actually. <laughs> he says, but think, Emma, and think carefully. It's your call on hand to handle this in the meeting tomorrow. So now Emma has this problem. How is she going to handle the meeting? Is she going to communicate one way or another way? What would the effect be? And then the students see those two approaches and they can evaluate them. So that's the beauty of these communication uh, lessons in Business Partner. Right, so at the end, they've seen the videos. You can watch them in your own time later, at least the setup video. How does, behave, how does she behave differently? No. What approach do you think yeah, would have the best outcome? So lots of critical thinking in these lessons and then you have functional language coming up later and preparation for the students then before they do their own task. Here there's a team building task for example, get students talking, they might decide to have a collaborative meeting or they might decide to approach it a different way and have the manager telling them what has been decided and having a more inf informative approach, you could ask the students to do this meeting in two different ways, yeah, to play to play around with these communication uh, skills and approaches. We're not just talking about a country culture here, we're talking about yeah, company culture and the way people work. So that brings me now to business writing. We've looked at lessons one and the structure there. We've looked at lessons three and the structure there for the video lessons in communication skills. And now if I can say a few words about business writing and then also the business workshops. So we have these writing lessons which are short and sweet at the end of each unit. They're called lessons five. It's only on one page. You should be able to do this in a class in about 45 or 50 minutes, or you might decide to do a few of the activities to present the language in class and then ask them as follow up to do the main writing task. That's obviously up to you. You can, we can, you can be flexible. Um, some examples of business writing. Well, it's not essay writing. It's not EAP. This is kind of real world business communication with emails. Um, with a company blog, a news blog in this case, or it could be an email request. 
different kinds of emails, different kinds of reports and proposals, or parts of reports and proposals. So these are the types of business writings we're asking the have students to do in these lessons. What happens? What happens in this lesson is you have the uh, an objective, an outcome, based on the global scale of English. That's the GSE, if you're not familiar with it, which has taken objectives from the Common European Framework, but built up on them by adding more professional ones yeah, and breaking breaking them down really into sort of micro objectives as well as the bigger picture outcome. And here in this writing lesson, students see a model, but they also interact with this model. They might complete it, they might choose options, they might edit it, or simply notice and underline useful expressions and phrases before they do some work with functional language. And again, we don't just give the functional language on a plate, we ask them to interact within the table, you know, maybe complete the table or classify the expressions to the function before then they do some more controlled writing and then the final task. So they've seen one model on the page, they do a writing task and then they compare their writing with another model which is available in the teacher's book at the back there in the writing bank. So there are at least kind of two models for students then to have a look at. Then at the end, of course, peer assessment might be one way of looking at their writing if you don't have time to correct all their writing yourself, or they do a self-assessment. Yeah. So we can offer again different approaches for these writing lessons. And another thing I'd like to talk about today, um, the, the business workshops. Now, you're probably all familiar with doing case studies. So the business workshop in Business Partner is a kind of case study. Students are using the language, um, the vocabulary that they've learned from the unit, be it about marketing or training and development or finance yeah, or business challenges. And it's a, a great opportunity for them to collaborate, work together in a real world context. Here, the companies are fictional. There's some input with reading or listening or interpreting figures. And as we can, if I can just show you one example. Now, the examples so far have been on B2, from B2. This is from the B2 plus level. Um, as you can see, it's, it's green here, this business workshop, which you'll find at the end. And it's about managing your money. And I find that my students kind of like, really like talking about this, even my younger students at Eura Aula in the Tourism University where I work in Barcelona. So the younger students like this, but also, you know, the older students who want to talk about finance as well. But it's an, a nice way into talking about finance. Students respond very well to these kind of figures presented as infographics. So we've got some of those there. Um, and it's also an important skill in itself, interpreting figures. But because they can see this visually, you can get them talking about years and percentages and the target market here, which is millennials. Um, we've got some interesting information, if, if I can just draw your attention here. So by 2022, yeah, this was taken from a real survey, millennials will make up over 40% of the workplace. So they're a very important target um, market in terms of, of being consumers. Yeah? How can we, or how can the students in this case, um, design financial products, banking products that will be attractive for, for this target market? So there are some questions and figures for them to think about. Again, if I erase my drawings, bear with me, I go back to normal and after this, then the students will do um, kind of an extended sort of role play or, or activity as part of this case study. Yeah, they'll be discussing ways of improving online banking, improving maybe an app, yeah? deciding on the low cost marketing campaign in order to attract uh, millennials. Um, there's more information here on the further pages. So as you can see, students here are working together, they're using language and they're using um, not just their grammar and vocabulary about finance, they're using the communication skills language that they've been looking at as well as um, business skills. 
So uh, those are the business workshops. As I've said before, they're towards the end of the book. And should we do um, oh, another poll for you? Um, Charlie, could you have the next poll ready just to kind of recap what we've been talking about so far? The question this time is which lessons which lessons have video content? So if you've been listening, and, and just to check, the poll I can see is now open. And Charlie will give us the results in a while. Bear with us. So I have prepared a quiz for you, which I will share with you. We'll ask you a few more questions now, just so that we're all on the same page and we've this is really to help you become a little bit more familiar with the course book, whether you've been teaching it from it already, or whether you plan to teach from it next year or next academic year. So, so for that, <clears throat> again, the majority did choose the correct answer, which was B, lessons one in communication skills. However, there were a few optimistic ones that wanted it to appear in all the lessons. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you there, Charlie. No, I'm afraid. Yes, it, it, we don't have videos for all the lessons. But uh, remember, you have the one authentic video lesson one and then up to four videos to show from that communication skills video lesson. Um, so we've been looking at some of these questions. There are eight levels in business partner there are eight units in the course book we've just answered the question there question three some more questions for you to think about you can do this quiz and uh, together with your learners in the first class or you can just um, maybe if you're training or your head of studies or a coordinator um, hand it out to, to teachers for them to do themselves to familiarize yourself yeah with the material and the content. And another question for you is where are the business workshops, which I've been talking about, where are the business workshops and the pronunciation pages in the course book? So Charlie, if you can open the poll there, is it either A in lessons two or in lessons five or at the back of the course book or in the teacher's resource book? What do you think? Again, if you can reply to that, that would be great. I can see there's a hub of activity. Right. Give you a few moments before I show you some more quiz questions. Great. So again, people have chosen the correct answer, which was C at the back of the course book. <laughs> That's right, yes. So the business workshops, as I said, they're optional. Um, they make sense to do towards the, the end of the unit, but you might choose to um, to do one, for example, that's relevant for your students. Now, I had a, a previous question in the, men, in the webinar this morning. Somebody was asking about a unit on the environment. Now, there isn't a whole unit on the environment, but um, the environment and sustainability comes up now and again as a hot topic. And for example, in business partner, the, the B2 plus level that I have here, there's a whole unit on challenges. And there you would have environmental challenges, but also there is a business workshop yeah, related on the environment in, in another level. So, you know, you could just focus on the topic here if it's of interest for your students, yeah, or use it to wrap up a unit. Now, some more questions for you. Um, we're going to do an, another two more polls, yeah, to end this session. So, Charlie, if you can have the next question ready, where is the second optional grammar point? Now, I was talking previously about the main grammar point. I can see the poll is now open. If you can answer this question, where is the second optional grammar point? So it's another grammar points additional one, but it's optional depending on your students or what your curriculum is. And is it in the communication skills lesson? Is it in business skills lesson four? Is it in lesson two or is it in writing lesson five? We'll give you a moment to answer that question and then it will be over to Charlie. Again, I can see people engaging. Ah, 
Yes, uh, that was a bit more of a split answer there. Uh, however, the majority at 36% did choose D, the correct answer, the writing. That's right. So we haven't focused on grammar. Um, we haven't had time to do everything today, unfortunately. Maybe that will be another webinar in the future. But um, the main grammar point is in lesson two. But this additional grammar point comes up when the students are writing. So those people who chose D are correct. Well done. It's um, in the writing lesson, lesson five. And it's not done in depth on the page, but the students can be redirected to additional grammar exercises on that point in the My English Lab yeah, or um, in the digital resources of the course book. And these might be little things like linkers or a little bit very important when writing or the use of articles and so on. So here we have the answers to that quiz and we'll be happy to pass on um, these slides to you after this session. If you'd like them, please contact Charlie. And there you have the quiz questions that you can do in your classes with the answers. And if I can just recap a little bit about the teacher's resource book, because um, especially when you're teaching business English and ESP, I realize you, you do want to have all the um, some more background notes and maybe a business brief here about a topic. Um, as I'm sure you all are, we, we tend to be sort of jack of all trades, don't we, as business English teachers, knowing a little bit about marketing, a little bit about finance, a little bit about training. But for certain topics, then it's useful to read up on those and you can have that information there. There are more photocopyable activities yeah, to make your students um, uh, a little bit more active and get getting up or moving around and doing something different and there are also more readings so we have short readings in lesson two but in the teacher's book you have some longer extended readings if you'd like to set that as an assignment for student to do between classes as well as the writing models those models i mentioned before a short model on the page in the book but then the full sort of model uh, model answer to their writing tasks um, and with the usual useful phrases, answer keys and so on. Ah, now I, I do like this photo. It's um, a photo that's used in one of the lessons to describe the lesson outcome. And as you can see here, the lesson outcome says that learners can use a range of language and strategies. So that's both language and strategies, communicative strategies for helping people to collaborate and work together effectively. And I think that's that's very nice. That's certainly what I want my students to be doing, whether they're you know young students, doing undergraduate students, or um, company students in company, and different from different professions. And I think that says um, that sums up quite nicely. I think what business partner is about. So it's not just about the grammar or just watching a video. Um, it's not just about the vocabulary. It's about you know engaging our students, motivating them, giving them lots of opportunities, lots of tasks where they can practice these useful employability skills, working together, collaborating together and trying out different approaches in class. So that sort of brings me to the, the end of the webinar there. Um, Thank you very much for joining me, but I I'm very happy to take questions in a moment. So if you can send those questions through to in our, on the chat through to Charlie, we'll deal with those in a moment. And just to conclude, then we're talking about presenting grammar and vocabulary, but also practicing communication and business, business skills in business partner. And as we've just seen there in the previous slide, the relevance of setting these realistic and relevant objectives and outcomes, but also at the end of class, um, going back to those and reflecting on those outcomes and checking, you know, that learners feel more confident about um, their communication skills for that outcome or whether they still need to work on things. And least, last but not least, also very importantly, noticing whether it's noticing how vocabulary is used or how certain expressions are used in writing, or the way people say things as native speakers when they're communicating in meetings. So again, the importance of noticing. So I hope that helps you with your future classes and that you really enjoy teaching with business partner. I know I've certainly enjoyed writing on the project and in my own way collaborating with 
lots of people, uh, a great team of people, yeah, who I've got a lot of respect for. And that was actually a lovely opportunity then working together um, on all these levels. Now I've been working on the higher levels, Margaret O'Keefe, uh, my co-author has written on most of levels, but especially the lower levels uh, from you know A1 through to B1 plus. And thank you very much.